Welcome you back to the press box here at Swanton High School as we are getting ready to get, uh, well, wrap up halftime and head into the third quarter of this football game this evening. If you are just joining us, our halftime score has the Aces leading the homestanding Swanton Bulldogs by 14, 20 to 6. Our halftime score. They've got the, uh, well, we've gone through the 20-minute halftime. The three-minute warm-up clock is running down right now. I've still got time to say a big thank you to the Hicksville Pharmacy, located right in the heart of downtown Hicksville, Ohio. They're your good neighbor pharmacy with a full pharmacy for you and your family's pharmaceutical needs, medical supplies, equipment, over-the-counter medications, gift sundries, and more. We want to thank them so very much for their continued diamond level support underwriting all of our Aces Sports broadcasts here on Hicksville Community Television. The Myers family, if you haven't uh, if you haven't seen the difference it makes to have a pharmacy that's locally owned and operated, stop by and see for yourself. And hey, if you'd like to uh, get the uh, latest information, uh, set up an appointment for a uh, COVID booster flu shot, uh, feel free, give them a call. It's 419-542-6218. Yes, you got that correct. I thought that was what it was. Only took me a couple years to get it <laughs> memorized. But, uh, again, they would love to see it. And if you have any other questions, they'd be happy to answer as well. We are so proud, again, to have them as one of our Diamond Level underwriters, our good friends, the Hicksville Pharmacy, your good neighbor pharmacy, located right in the heart of downtown Hicksville, Ohio. Now, we do want to make mention, if you are watching our live stream, as we mentioned before when we were doing the pregame, uh, this press box is an older press box, and uh, we are not able to remove the windows like we normally do when we, uh, when we live stream a game. So we have to shoot our camera. We have no choice. We have to shoot our camera through a window. And with the lights on, you can see that there's some reflection and there's some glare. So you can actually sort of, it's kind of <laughs> neat. It's, yeah. we're, it's sort of like a nouveau wave. It's a new wave. You can watch Chris It'll work while he's on camera, on camera. So uh, it's a new innovation. So, uh, again, uh, we know that it's not ideal, but it's the best that uh, we can do. And we're not, uh, we're not saying anything disrespectful or demeaning towards uh, the gang here at Swanton. They have been great to us, uh, helped us get set up, gave us directions on where to park, and uh, again, uh, got us the, the rosters, everything we needed. They've been just a, a joy to be with up here in the press box. So uh, again, nothing, uh, nothing against them. It's not their fault either. So, again, we just so want to, again, thank everybody here, including uh, Athletic Director Wade Hasselman, for allowing us to be here to cover the game for you this evening. I'm Bill Murphy. That handsome devil that you can sort of see reflected in your screen is Chris Warner. Well, he can't see me now. I scooted up my chair. Oh, there we go. He's hiding. And uh, the Aces are going to be kicking off to the Bulldogs to start the third quarter. Kick is in the air. And uh, it's caught and dropped. They scoop it up back at the 28-yard line. Number 23 stays on his feet. The Aces are pursuing him. And they finally drag him down at about the 44. Ball was carried by uh, Jonah Rico. So Rico gets him out to about the 45-yard line. We'll see where they're going to mark the ball. I think it's going to be at the 44, where it'll be first and 10 for Swanton. And again, if in the heat of the moment I accidentally say Edgerton because we're so used to saying the Edgerton Bulldogs on this channel, I apologize. I don't think I've done it more than once. But well, we also have the Defiance Bulldogs. Well, we I never carry that. We never have them. Yeah, but I mean, well, we, we go there every now and then for tournament yeah. coverage. So Here we go. We've got a new quarterback out on the floor. That's Jaden Wilson. 
on the floor. On the field, Jaden Wilson, who is a sophomore, he took that snap and a pickup of a couple gets across the 45 to the 46 yard line, bringing up second and eight. So, yeah, their new quarterback, Jaden Wilson. Wilson is a 5'7 freshman, clocking in at 132 pounds. So getting a chance to have a few snaps here in this game. We'll see if the Aces have adjusted any of their personnel for the second half as well. He plays under center. Hand off, nothing doing. They're going to drop him for about a two-yard loss, and it'll be third down and about 10. Back to the original line of scrimmage. <laughs> All right, a third and 10 play for the Swanton Bulldogs. Jaden Wilson under center, dropping back. Wilson puts the ball in the air. It's caught across midfield. Nice forward motion across the 40 into Aces territory and brought down at about the 38-yard line, 39. Catch and run by Caden Bryan. That'll move the chains. There you Got go. Got the game ball. Paul Overmeyer, all right. Is that a raffle? I think it was a raffle. Yes, yeah, yes. Were, that was one of the 50-50 yeah, tickets. And yeah, so he got the game ball ticket. There you go. Even ha had it offered to be signed yeah. by their athletic director. 39-yard line, first and 10. As we just go under 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. Wilson, quick handoff. Powering forward, the Aces are going to stack him up and stop him at about the 35-yard line. And that looked like Brian with the carry. They are going to mark him at the 36. As Swanton trying to put some points on the board to start this third quarter and get themselves back into this football game. They're down by 14. Wilson takes a snap, balls loose. I think he fell on it. Ace is diving for it, but I don't think any of them could get to it before Wilson did. So that'll be a one yard loss. That'll make it third down and well, they're saying third and 34 on the, uh, that's not right. <laughs> on the scoreboard, oh. third and seven, there we go. I just looked over and I saw third and 37. Yeah, I was about to say, oh, no, it's on, balls on the 37-yard line. They just had the, uh, they had the, the yard and the down transposed, or the to-go transposed. All right, here we go, Wilson. Rolling out. Looking downfield, puts the ball in the air. He overthrows his intended receiver, I think was number 10, Brennan Mersing. And that'll fall incomplete and bring up fourth down. Fourth down and seven on the Aces 37-yard line. Decision time, was it four down territory? We'll see what they come up with on the Bulldog side of the ball. Wilson will bring in the play from the sideline. Jaden huddles up his offense. And they'll break huddle. They're going to go for it. Seven yards to go to move the chains. 37 yards to get the points. Wilson dropping back. Rolling out. Going to hang on to it himself. Wilson. I don't think so. He's going to turn it over on downs. He got inside the 35-yard line, but then they knock him out of bounds. So it'll be a turnover on downs. The Aces will get the ball back. It looks like at about their own 34-yard line. 8.16 to go in quarter number three. Aces, their first offense, offensive series of the second half, up by 14. 
And it looks like they're keeping their front line guys out there, at least for right now, Garrett Turnbull. And you can see George Green out there, and same with uh, Braden or Brant Langham. So, yep, they're going to keep the uh, first stringers out, at least for a little while yet. Turnbull sets up in the shotgun. Green's the back behind him. Two wide receivers out on either side. Man in motion, that's Langham. Langham gets the handoff. Langham turns the corner. Langham gets across. Langham gets first down yardage and gets to midfield, maybe a little farther. Langham stopped by Eichner. Eichner made the stop for the Bulldogs, and it looks like they're going to put the nose of the football right on the 50-yard line. First and 10, aces. Clock rolling, 7.51. Quick handoff. That's green. Oh, I take that back. That wasn't green. That was cross Z-Dyke. Z-Dyke. powers it down inside the 35 to the 34-yard line for another race's first down. Turnbull getting the snap. Hand off to Green. And Green powers it down to about the 22 yard line. So they turn the lights off in the press box to try to cut down our glare situation. But now it's kind of hard to see the roster. Well, give or take, Bill. Yeah. We'll make do as best we can. One thing I will point out is Lee Star. Do we have, do we have a flashlight in the uh, um, one bag? Let me look. Let me get the camera. Set I think up we first. had a. I think we have a flashlight in the camera bag. One All of those. Right. One of those high-powered special forces flashlights. Zedike gets the carry. Zedike to the 20-yard line. That's where he's dropped down. Zedike stopped by Eichner. Eitner, the Brian. defender stopping Zedike's run. And across, Zedike gets him to the edge of the red zone. The nose of the football on the 20-yard line. Aces with a second and seven. That better? Yeah, it does make a bit of a difference. Good. See, I told you it was a good idea to have those in there. And once again, I was right. <laughs> Green with the care. Oh, they get George. They stack him up, and he gets back to about the line of scrimmage. He might have even lost about a half a yard. Make it third and eight now for the Aces. Yeah, they'll mark him back a yard out to the 21. Green will step out. Z Dyke will come back in. Third and eight for the Aces ball on the 21-yard line. 5-10 to go in quarter number three. Turnbull keeps it, rolls out. Turnbull in the air. Man wide open, caught. And first down yardage and a flag thrown at the end of the play. It's in the Aces backfield. And it's going to be against personal Hicksville, foul. personal foul. Don't buy the aces. So that's going to wipe out that first yard gain. And it'll march him back 15, all the way back to the 35 yard line, where it'll be third and forever for Hicksville.
There you go, Bill. Got your flat light, flashlight situation all sorted. There you go. Ooh, you, just requires a little bit of experimentation. Yes. Let me get you one of those holders, like an arm to hold it up for you. All right. Handoff. That's to Langham. Langham turns the corner. Langham powering forward. Langham inside the 30 to about the 29. On the reverse handoff. That'll be fourth down and long, but again, the ace is probably in four down territory here with the ball at the 29 yard line. Play a stop by Tversky. Fourth down. So the aces with the fourth and long, but they're deep in Swanton territory, so I'm going to guess that they're going to go for it here. Maybe a field goal, possibly. I don't know if Stucky has the leg for that <laughs> yet or not. He's getting better. And maybe at some point, but right now, even if they can pick up uh, five yards or whatever, it'd be almost as good as a punt. Turnbull dropping back. Turnbull airing it out. And it's picked off. Oh, the worst possible thing. And it's going to be returned all the way to near midfield. I think Zedike was the one that got him. Tackled on the play by... Zedike. Zedike. <laughs> there we go. First and ten, Bulldogs. So that's a, a two two interceptions each tonight. One two for each squad. With the change of possession, the Swanton Bulldogs find themselves back in action, back on offense, and they're only 52 yards away from the end zone. Wilson, little bit of movement on the line there. That'll back him up five. That'll take him back to the 43 yard line. Stops the clock with 3.42 to go in quarter number three. Wilson hangs on to it himself, and Wilson, nothing doing. He'll get to the 45-yard line, and uh, they'll corral him and put him to the turf. Wilson's a tough kid. He's only 130-some pounds, so he'll be feeling some of those hits tomorrow. Jaden Wilson comes out with the play. Second down and about 13 after that loss. Ball at the 45-yard line. Wilson. Quick throw and incomplete. That looked like a little bit of miscommunication. His intended receiver was uh, looked like Connor Mitchie, and it looks like Mitchie just uh, started to break in the wrong direction. The ball sailed over his head and hits the turf. It brings up third down. Bulldogs break huddle. Here we go. Third and long for Swanton. Looking to get back into this game. Down by 14. Pitch back. And nothing doing. The Aces sniff that one out. Pitch went to Trenton Eitner. And uh, he gets dropped for another loss. Eitner. And that will make it fourth and about 15. Russell by Schooley. So fourth and long, staring the 
Edgerton Bulldogs in the face. Edgerton Swanton Bulldogs <laughs> in the face. There, I know it's going to do it again. I've probably been doing it, and I don't even realize it. I, I haven't been noticing be, either. There's going to be something in the comments, like, you know you said Edgerton like 82 times. Yeah, someone that counts, yeah. yeah. So timeout on the field. Which, well, I got the time here. I'm going to say a quick PSA. Um, uh -huh. For anyone that sees links on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel saying click here for the live stream. Don't do uh, it. Yeah, do not click on those links. Those are scam links. Uh, any links by us will be directly from our, U from our Facebook page. We will not put them in the comments on any post. We will put them yeah. directly in the post. Our links usually will have YouTube in them yes. somewhere. Yes. As well as uh, when we comment stuff on our on our YouTube channel, it will have a little check mark right next to yeah. our name. Also, if you go to watch any of our live streams on either our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, you go right to the live stream. You're never asked for any information. You're not yes. charged. They're free. So if you go to a link and they want you to enter your name and create an account or anything like that, that is not us. We do not do that. Yes. That timeout was by the Aces? Uh, they both they have three on either side of the scoreboard right now, so I'm not oh, sure. Okay. I don't know who to take a timeout away yeah, from. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Yep, they both still have three timeouts on the scoreboard, so until they change the scoreboard, we'll keep ours the same. Yes. So here comes the punting team. Good snap, good kick. Going back, caught back at about the 14-yard line. Working his way through, and a nice run back, still on his feet. Across the 40-yard line. Frank's punt is returned to the Hicksville. The Aces take it all the way back to the 40-yard line. I think that was Braden Dix with the return, but I couldn't catch his number. Again, I'm looking through a window, too, so I've got some glare issues. We're doing the best we can. But it's first and 10, Hicksville. 2.07 to go. Turnbull. Long count. And they'll reposition people again. Now they snap the ball. Turnbull rolling out. Turnbull hanging on to it himself. Turnbull tucking it under and getting near midfield before stepping out of bounds. Eitner. Eitner's the one that uh, got him to go out of bounds at about the 49-yard line. But still a nice gain for the Aces. Bulldogs setting their offense is uh, 2.01 to go here in quarter number three. Well, maybe that was some kind of an official timeout. I don't know. We'll just. Um, I heard we'll that uh, it was a team timeout. Is this uh -huh. newer well, person running the scoreboard? Somebody. Well, anyway, Turnbull, quick handoff to Green. Green still on his feet. Green finds a nice hole. Green powering inside the 35. George Green down to about the 32-yard line. First and 10 aces. First and 10, Hicksville. You've uh, done the weight room with George yes, Green. I, yes, I have done weightlifting with George for two years now. This will be year number three. He's got some power in those legs. Um, I can say he's uh, the only kid in the Hicksville weight room that can actually bend the bars. <laughs> uh, we, we have a bar, and it's called George's Bar, of course, and it's the one he strictly uses and the coach will not let him use another one because he keeps bending it. So we don't want to have all the bars bent. <laughs> and I, I kid you not, it is not at a 180-degree angle anymore. Uh, Turnbull, hand off to Green again. Green again going around the outside. Green turns the corner, still on his feet. Green motors down. Looks like he's going to pick up another first down. Down to near the 20-yard line. Mark it at the 21. 123 to go 
in quarter number three. Aces driving. They're up 14. Kind of get the feeling they'd like to add a little to that margin just in case because this is a feisty Swanton Bulldog team, and they have been battling hard. They've already been in the end zone once, and there's no reason to think they couldn't do it again once or twice given the opportunity. Turnbull. Hands off. This is a reverse. Zedike cross inside the 10-yard line down to about the 9, maybe the 8. Zedike takes it down to the 9. Zedike. Clock still running, closing in on one minute to go in quarter number three. What's well, been a fun football game for us to announce for you up here in the press box. Well played. Turnbull. Gave it to Green again. Green inside the five, maybe to the five. We'll see if they give him forward progress. He should be right at about the five-yard line. It looks like that's where his derriere round up when he was brought down. Turned him around and sat him down on the five-yard line. And indeed, that is where the ball is. Second and goal now from the five-yard line. It was a first and goal from the nine to start off the series. 12 seconds. We'll see if they can get a playoff here before the quarter ends. And again, it looks like it's going to be a direct snap to Langham. Nope. No, he got it off right before the expiration. And nothing. Oh, he stays on his feet. Whoa. He escapes. Langham cuts back the other way. Langham working his way a little closer. He'll get brought down at about the three-yard line, maybe the two. Now that was a move, Bill. Yeah, I thought that they had him for yes. a loss, and he just came out of nowhere. He's still on the turf. So that's not good. Uh, it's Brant Langham. That's the end of the third quarter with the Aces up 20-6. to six. When we get back into action, it's going to be third and goal from the three-yard line for the Aces as they're out on the field uh, taking a look at Brant Langham. And while they do that and while we've got some time, I'm going to say another thank you to another one of our Diamond Level Underwriting supporters making our coverage possible. We can't thank them enough, especially for these road games. Uh, the uh, underwriting support that we get really makes it a lot easier for us to be able to go on the road for the away games during the football season. I want to say a big thank you to Denny Vetter and the whole gang at Arc Solutions Incorporated of Hicksville, Ohio. Arc Solutions features welding, plasma, and a lot more. And uh, not only do they do some incredible stuff out there in Hicksville's Industrial Park, but they are just great members of the community. Not only do they support us, but we were mentioning even earlier, they were out at the uh, livestock sale yes. today, uh, supporting the uh, youth with their livestock projects. You've seen them mentioned whenever there's a community uh, thing that uh, needs support. Uh, they're always, na their name is always mentioned. We just cannot thank them enough. What a, it's a great place to work and it's just such a great example of, uh, I guess, the Hicksville ethic. Uh, we just want to thank them so, so very much. And again, uh, I, I, there, there's just no way you can go into all the stuff that they do there. Uh, best thing to do is to find out for yourself. Check them out online. It's really a terrific, terrific company and something to be proud of in Hicksville. It's www.arcsolinc.com. Our good friends and our Diamond Level underwriting supporter, underwriting all of our Aces Sports broadcasts, every level, every sport, every platform all the diamond level supporters this time around arc solutions incorporated of hicksville ohio and again online at www.arcsolinc.com looks like they walked langham off and we've got again a third and goal from the three yard line for the aces turnbull hangs on to it himself dives and is going to be short Nope, they're going to say he went in. Turbo, touchdown. Yep. I was about to say the football went he, in. His he legs dove, didn't. and it looked like they brought him up short, but he broke the plane before he made contact with – he broke the plane with the ball out in front of him before any part of his body hit the turf. So that's another touchdown. This time it's a quarterback keeper from three yards out, 
And with the score, the Aces go up now by 20, 26 to 6, with uh, 11.53 to go in the fourth quarter of the contest here tonight. And we'll get ready for the conversion attempt. Let's see if the Aces can go up by 21 or maybe even 22. They'll break huddle. And it looks like they might be going for two here. Yep, the Aces are setting up to go for two. Turnbull rolling out. Turnbull looking. Turnbull puts the ball in the air. Caught. And it's good. It was number seven making the grab Austin Sanders, it looked like. And Sanders completes the two-point conversion. And that makes it 28 to 6 and puts the Aces up by 22. So that means that they score with a two-point conversion. They could go up by 30, which would start the running clock for the remainder of the game. 11.53 to go, and the Aces looking pretty good here so far early in the fourth quarter. They're up by 22, 28 to 6. They're getting ready to kick it back to the Swanton Bulldogs. Bulldogs ready to get back on offense. Again, we're glad to be here on the road with the Aces. A pretty good contingent making their way from Hicksville, but it is kind of a long drive, and yes. there is the fair going on. So uh, we are really happy to be able to be here tonight. And, uh, again, uh, we've uh, knock on wood, we've got a really good uh, – Wi-Fi signal and a pretty good vantage point and a lot of help from up here in the press box. And yes, a lot of just, help. We're just really happy to be able to bring you this game tonight if you weren't able to make the long trip from Hicksville because it is, it's, a, it's over an hour drive from, from Aces Country out here to Swanton. Kick is up. It's a short one. He shanks it. It stays in bounds. And rolls down inside the 30-yard line. It looks like they're going to kill it about the 29-28. I think they were expecting that to go out of bounds. But, you know, that oblate spheroid that every now and then it just rolls its own way. Hard to predict sometimes. And it stayed in bounds. And uh, it's uh, brought to rest at the 29-yard line. First and 10 for the Swanton Bulldogs. Oh, they're saying the 28-yard line officially. Okay. Their quarterback, young Jaden Wilson, only a freshman into the game once again. Seeing if he can engineer something here offensively. He hasn't done a bad job at all so far tonight. Quick handoff, not much there, maybe a yard or two. They'll advance the ball out to near the 30-yard line. Oh, look, I can make shadow puppets on the wall. Bulldogs base huddle, break huddle. I'll explain that last comment I made in just a moment here after this play. Ball in the air, picked off. Aces with the interception at the 33-yard line of Swanton. Oh, my. That'll be the third interception for the Aces here tonight. No, we turn the lights off to cut down the glare on the uh, light, on the uh, panes of glass that we have to shoot the camera through. Uh, it was too dark to see the roster, so we got a flashlight. I've got this flashlight sitting up. The flashlight is shining on this white wall. So if I want to, I can, like, make shadow puppets on the wall with my hands. I was going to try to amuse Chris, but he's lost in web surfing right now to try to track down I don't know what. Oh, no, sorry. I was... Uh Cutting down on those, uh, okay. those scam links. Yeah, no, uh, tr trying to protect our viewers there out there. Turnbull 
dropping back. Hangs on to it. Turnbull running forward and gets back almost to the line of scrimmage, but it looks like he's going to lose a yard. He said, that's more important than me, like, you know, making like a talking gorilla. Turnbull. <laughs> you know, anybody can do that. <laughs> All right. Turnbull loses a yard. It'll be second. Well, actually, he loses a couple. So it's going to be second and 12 for the Aces. 10.22 to go. Ball right now on the 30, just outside the 35-yard line. Turnbull. Hand off to Green. Green powers forward. Gets to the 35, so he'll pick up a yard maybe. Oh, it was Cross Zedike. I'm sorry. So Cross Zedike gets him a little bit of real estate, not much. Third down and 11. Ball right on the 35-yard line now for the Aces. Play comes in from the sideline, courtesy of George Green. They'll head into the huddle. Garrett Turnbull sends out his offensive squad, gets the snap. Turnbull drops back, ball in the air, caught, and dropped. They got that playoff with one second left on the play yeah. clock. Turnbull to Langham. Langham got his hands on it and dropped it to the turf. That'll bring up fourth down. I think the Aces may well go for it here. Very nice night here for football action. Like I said, a little bit cloudy as uh, the sun was setting, but no precipitation, nice breeze, and... Uh, Maybe a little bit muggy, but nothing like we had to yes, deal with like on Wednesday no, and Thursday of this nothing week. Nothing compared to Much last Much nicer yesterday. day today. Turnbull gets the snap, drops back. Ball's in the air. He's got a man off oh. his fingers and incomplete. That was Braden Dix, I believe, that it bounced off of his hands. Jammed his finger, too, it looks like. it. He was kind of... Clutching his hand and jumping yeah, up and well, down a little bit. Hit, when it hit his yeah. hand, it kind of bent his fingers back a little said bit. He either bent him the wrong way or he jammed one of his fingers trying to catch that ball. So Aces will turn it over on downs. It'll be first and 10 Swanton with, again, the ball right at the 35-yard line. So we know one of these teams only has two timeouts. So At least that's what we suspect. Yeah. Yes. Well, I know uh, the scores <laughs> confirmed it, so... So we'll just see if somebody calls a timeout and then they get the flag the because one. they called the fourth timeout. Yes, then we so know. We'll know. Ace is back on defense. Ball tossed and incomplete. That was the... Uh, Ace is number 22. Camden Walter there to make sure that the ball was not caught. Wilson back under center. Second down play. Again, rolling out, looking downfield. Ball in the air, almost intercepted. Intended receiver was number 80. That's uh, Dennis Robinson. Wilson to Robinson. Incomplete. And the Aces almost had pickoff number four there. Third and 10 now for Swanton. Nine minutes, clock stopped with the incomplete pass. 9.04 to go in regulation. This time it's a quick handoff, 
and they get him around the ankles and they bring him down just at the 35 yard line. They might give him a half a yard depending on where they mark his knee. And we've got another player down. Officials have out for an injury. And that looks like it might be a cramp. Doc Haggerty out there stretching those leg muscles as the ace is down on the field. So we've got eight minutes and 52 seconds left to go in our fourth quarter. The Aces leading by 22, 28 to 6. I'm Bill Murphy along with Chris Warner. Glad to have you with us here at Swanton High School at Swanton Field, home of the Bulldogs. As uh, he is up and mobile. That's uh, number 54, Bronson Graber. So got a bit of a cramp there. So they'll walk him off. And we'll bring the teams back out onto the field of play. And we'll get ready for more action on the gridiron here. Wilson up under center. Snap. Well, I take that back as a punt. Yeah, I should have known that. It was fourth down. And it'll roll to about the 32-yard line where it'll be downed by the Bulldogs. So, four and out for Swanton. Aces get the ball back. They'll have it. Now they're going to put it at the 31, first and 10 for Hicksville with eight minutes and 31 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. Aces looking to even up their record on this young season at one and one. Get back to 500 and be on the winning, be on a winning crest as they get ready for week number three hosting Eden next week. Turnbull, handoff, working his way through traffic, still on his feet, powering down to about the 39-yard line. Green, the Green. Ball George Green. Kurt. That'll make it a second and second two. Three. I'm only going to say three, okay. Second and three, the ball needs to get to the 42-yard line to move the chains. Zedike, Zedike, first yard. And it's going to be a huge gain. Zedike. That'll move the, the chains. First down, Aces. Gain about 15. All right, start the clock back up. Ball's going to be on the 46-yard line. Aces get in position. 7.15 left to go in the game. Yep. Aces Just up 28 to 6. I apologize. I was sending a quick text to our other crew over at the uh, fairgrounds, letting us know that they just wrapped up covering the Demolition Derby. So they had a couple quick questions I was answering quickly. So thank you for filling in, Christopher. Second down for the Aces as the ball sits now on the 41-yard line. 6.44 clock rolling. Second and five as the Aces look to maybe put one more in the end zone and uh, run down that clock as yeah, much as they put, can. put the frosting on the cake here. Aces in, in no Swan. rush. Yep, they can take their time. Turnbull with the snap. Pitch back. Cross Zedike, balls loose. 
And it's recovered by Swanton. Cross Zedike, a good run, but the ball pops out, and one of the Bulldogs players falls on it. So it's another turnover. That's three on each side of the ball now. Three interceptions tonight for the Aces. Two interceptions and a fumble recovery for the Swanton Bulldogs. Ball will be at the 28-yard line. First and 10 for Swanton. And still on his feet, running around the corner. He gets some positive yardage. That'll move the ball out to about the 34-yard line. As Jaden Wilson will come over and Get the play on the sideline. Head coach Eric Keller imparting his wisdom. And officially at the 34-yard line, as we said, center will come out first. Timeout, Bulldogs. And the Bulldogs don't like the look of the defensive set by the Aces, so they're going to call their... Well, it's either their first or their second timeout, but this one is official. Timeout on the field called by the Swanton Bulldogs. As they talk it over to try to figure out what they want to do on this upcoming second and four. They really, they really need to get down the field and get some points on the board quickly if they want to stand any chance of being able to get back into this football game. So we'll wait for the play to resume down on the field. Well, looking ahead a little bit, uh, coming up next week, uh, as uh, we mentioned earlier, we have uh, a fair amount of volleyball action coming your way. Monday, first day of school for the Aces for grades 1 through 12 and they will start off with a two-hour welcome back celebration assembly on uh, Monday afternoon at uh, at 5 p.m. I believe is uh, junior high volleyball and then they've got well quick handoff on the inside not much there but he will pick up a couple Number 33, Trenton Eitner. So we're hopeful. I have to go. Uh, I have to go to the eye doctor on Monday at about three o'clock, and I know that I'm going to get my eyes dilated and everything. So I'm hoping by five o'clock I'll be able to stand the bright lights in the gym and be able to uh, help out and bring you junior high volleyball action for the first time this season. We'll sort of play that one by ear. Quick handoff up the middle. Not much there, but it looks like he might have enough to move the chains. He does. He gets about a yard and a half past the needed line again. That'll move the six and a fresh set of downs for Swanton as they get it out to the 41-yard line. And then again, we have two nights of a junior varsity and varsity volleyball action coming your way next week on Tuesday and on Thursday, starting at 5.30 each night. I think uh, Pettisville and I think it's Continental. But anyway, we've got two nights of high school volleyball. And of course, week number three of football coming up one week from today. And another whistle. Delay game. Hold on. And that's a delay of game called against Swanton as the clock expires, the play clock expires, and that'll move them back five. 
So their first and 10 becomes a first and 15. So Wilson on a first and 15. Puts the ball in the air. Laterals it out to number two, caught. And he's going to get swarmed under almost immediately. Connor Mitchie makes the grab, but not much uh, more. He might get a yard or two of forward progress. But that'll be about it. It'll be second and long, second and 14. They're only going to give him a yard. The bots are restless tonight, huh? Yes, actually, <laughs> I, I, I just, I just think I fixed the solution. So. Wilson, quick handoff, and he bounces off the defenders, and they take him sideways and don't let him go forward. But, but yes, yes, to answer your question, yes, the bots are being ruthless tonight. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they're they're like gnats. <laughs> that was, I believe, Harris with the carry. Uh, not much there, no gain. So third and 14 now for Swanton. So here we go, third and 14 now for Swanton. Wilson up under center. Wilson rolling out. Wilson, ball in the air, and intercepted, intercepted by the Aces. Wilson intercepted by Fix. It'll be first to ten, Fixville. So the Aces capitalize on their fourth interception tonight. Get the ball back. It'll be first and ten at the Aces 48 yard line. And they only need to kill two minutes and 10 seconds to be able to celebrate a victory on that long bus ride back to Hicksville tonight. Yes. It won't, be see, it won't seem nearly as long. Got a win <laughs> under your belt. And they can entertain themselves watching the replay <coughs> of our coverage on the Hicks. I was just about to mention that. Um. <laughs> Hopefully they all subscribe. Green with a strong carry near first down yardage. George. George gets out to uh, the, uh, looks like about the 46-yard line of Swanton. You know, Bill, I bet you had some of the players tell me that, that they do watch it on their way home from the longer travel times. No, there you go. It's kind of nice to know that. Yes, they well, they always like to hear uh, our comments, actually, you know, because they're, of course, they're playing mm -hmm. the game, but they yeah. always like to hear what we have to say. That's true. And I haven't gotten beat up yet, so I must not <laughs> be too mad, so. And I haven't had any of them come to me during weightlifting. <laughs> All right. Turnbull. High snap, but he hangs on to it. Quick handoff. Right up the spout. And short game by Cross Zedike to the 45-yard line, pickup of about a yard. That'll bring up third down and three. But most importantly, he stays on the ground inbounds and the clock continues to run. Now, there's two timeouts left for the Bulldogs. They could stop the clock, but there's no real point in them doing that right now. Until they have the football back in their hands, it's kind of academic. Turnbull taking his time. Watching that play clock go down to seven, six, five. Takes the snap, hands it off. Green, green. First down yardage. And Green steps out of bounds, unfortunately, or gets run out of bounds, which will stop the clock at 34 seconds. But that's a fresh set of downs for the Aces, and that pretty much should be all she wrote about that. The fat lady is getting ready to sing here tonight. 
for the Swanton Bulldogs. Ball resting on the 37-yard line. Aces with a first and 10. And only 30, well, the clock, still, well, the clock is rolling, okay. Turnbull hands it off to Green. Green powers forward. He gets stood up, pushed back. But that should about do it. Three, two, two one, and that's the that's game. It. It's all over, and the Aces draw even. They they get they get back to 500 with their first win of the season tonight. A victory over the Swanton Bulldogs, 28 to six. Your final score. Except with the win, the Aces even up their record at one win and one loss on the young season. Swanton will fall to 0 and 2. The Aces will congratulate the uh, Swanton Bulldogs in their field. And we'll get ready to wrap up our coverage for you tonight here on the Hicks TV YouTube channel. Well, as we uh, do get ready to wrap things up this evening, we want to say again a big thank you to uh, everyone here at Swanton High School, the Swanton Athletic Department. Their, uh, their um, athletic director, Wade Hasselman, and all of the crew that have been up here in the press box. Uh, we want to thank them so very much for their hospitality and being nice, helping us out and dealing with some of the uh, issues that we unexpectedly had here in this press box this evening and allowing us to have a pretty good broadcast here tonight. We also want to say a big thank you once again to all four of our Diamond Level Underwriting supporters underwriting all of our Aces Sports coverage here on Hicksville Community Television. And again, it's an especial thank you to all four of them because they really, really do help us when we go on the road for these away games during the regular season. Our Diamond Level Underwriting supporters include the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville, Ohio, Jim Schmidt Chevrolet Buick, Jim Schmidt Ford, and online at jimschmidtauto.com. Thanks also to APT Manufacturing Solutions of Hicksville, Ohio, located in Hicksville's Industrial Park. Find out about the opportunities that they have available. Maybe one will suit you. Check them out online at www.aptmfg.com slash careers. Thanks also to the Hicksville Pharmacy located in the heart of downtown Hicksville, Ohio. They're your good neighbor pharmacy with a full-service pharmacy for you and your family, medical supplies and equipment, over-the-counter medications, gift sundries, and more. The Hicksville Pharmacy right in the heart of downtown Hicksville, Ohio. And, of course, our good friends at Arc Solutions Incorporated of Hicksville, Ohio, a world-class facility located in Hicksville's Industrial Park. Arc Solutions Incorporated online at www.arc. S-O-L-I-N-C dot com. Well, with that, we are going to wrap it up for this evening and pack up our stuff and head back to Hicksville. Again, we want to thank you so much for joining us this evening. We hope you enjoyed the live stream coverage here on the Hicks TV YouTube channel. If you did and you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. You can click on the, uh, the, the button for notifications. That way you'll know whenever we schedule a live update, a live stream, and whenever we upload a new programming to our video on demand library here on the YouTube channel as well. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so very much. And again, if you have not done so, please consider subscribing and also consider following us on Facebook as well. We'd love to have you, and that's a great way to keep up to date with all the things that are going on at Hicksville Community Television. And we try to keep you updated as best we can with other things of interest for uh, Hicksville Community and the western part of Defiance County as well. So with that, yeah, we're going to cap it off here tonight. Once again, your final score this evening, it was the Aces 28 to defeating 28-6 to six, the Swanton Bulldogs. Our next sports broadcast coming your way, I think hopefully Monday afternoon. Hopefully. It'll be junior high volleyball action uh, starting at 5 p.m. with the seventh grade match from Hicksville Schools. And with that, we're out of here. Thanks so much for joining us. And uh, for Chris Warner... Running the camera, overseeing the live stream. I'm Bill Murphy with Hicksville Community Television wishing all of you a very good night and good sports. Uh, uh, uh.